Thank y'all for tuning in. I'm Jeremy Irwin, and this is Celebrating Homecoming. Now listen, we all know that two years ago, Beyonce changed the world with Beach Ella. And then last year, she came out with the documentary to let us know how she did it. Now today, we want to celebrate her works, and we also want to showcase the singers who had the fortune to sing behind the queen. Ah, They got some great stories. They're amazing singers. I want you guys to know who they are. Let's dig into it right now. We ain't gonna waste no time. I was walking dogs for a whole year with WAG mm -hmm. and doing Postmates and Uber Eats and all that stuff because I was I was previously on a show um, called Duets and I won the show and I couldn't really do a lot um, like work, work here because of contractual stuff or whatever so I had to wait on a lot of things. Um, so I ended up going overseas, I played Michael Jackson over there and then came back here or came back to New York, lived there and, and in my car for a little while. Then I drove all the way here, we lived in my car for a couple weeks did WAG, Postmates, Uber Eats for a year and got the call. I was just working nine to fives and, you know, gigging part time. And then I actually put in my two weeks at the high school I was working at and um, just transitioning into music full time. I got to work at Disneyland, got to work around the city um, with different artists, singing background and, and studio sessions. And then that transition straight into Coachella. I moved out here August of 2017. Um, and I just, you know, kind of dove right into the industry, man, trying to figure things out. I had a couple friends out here that were, you know, kind of already making some moves, so they kind of connected me. Um, and so far, I've been able to stay afloat out here, man. We're all grinding, so it's been a cool process. So less than six months after being in LA, you are now working with the biggest star in the world. Man, that was the craziest experience ever. Like I said, I had a couple friends um who were already out here and they were forwarding me auditions um sending me different things like yo just just try out for this and i was like okay this so i you know that opportunity came did the audition and it just you know kind of worked out for me man just all glory to god for the opportunity man i moved to la i'd say 2000 like late 2011 early 2012. i think my first gig when i moved to la was doing backgrounds for Nicki minaj and that was very interesting <laughs> and then um there's like been just random gigs in between there for different artists janelle monet um i worked a lot with adam blackstone obviously with uh, white throne and jason white and kanye west um and it's just been a really like her i did her with bt um this wow. past year and kirk franklin yeah it was a lot of fun um it's just very interesting with how everything has kind of happened. It's been just a steady progression of work. Um, I've been here now for like seven years. So it's been it's been amazing. San Diego is not far, but it's far enough to feel like I'm not home anymore. All right. So one of the interesting things that I witnessed while interviewing the singers is that none of them had the same audition experience. So take a look at how each individual's process was different from the next. It was crazy. I was actually at work. I used to work for an environmental company because obviously when you're not full time yet with this industry, you have a hustle. You do your like your regular nine to five yep. and then, you know, you do your dream and you let that fund it. So I was actually at work in my company car, in my company uniform and outfit, driving around. And I got a call from my um, from one of my friends, George, and he was like, hey, are you available for a Beyonce rehearsal today? And I was like, <laughs> like, like, wait a minute like what what he was like are you available for it like 4 30 a rehearsal for beyonce and i'm like uh absolutely so i literally i went in my car and in my company car in my company outfit and i went to what i thought was going to be a rehearsal but it ended up being an audition 
So um, got there, did an audition. There was like I think about 30 people or so. Um, and we did we did the full audition there. I think we ended up auditioning to like party. We did a small dance step and then did a little bit of party. They broke us up into groups and then had us write our information down and that was it. And then about three days later, I got an email with the rehearsal schedule. So that was that was it. Um, someone who actually has worked for Beyonce for like 14 years, who's a really close friend of our family, uh, called me and he was like, hey, uh, I have an audition for you and um, this is what you gotta do. So he's like telling me all the stuff, but he's talking really fast. So I was like, I just stopped him. I said, who is it for? And he was like, now you know I can't say that. Now, this person also works with Janet Jackson. So I was like, okay, well, he would have just said Janet. So I just immediately was like, okay, it's me. <laughs> um, so <laughs> he texted me all the details. I couldn't even do the audition, actually, um, because he wanted me to send something and then come in a few hours later. I was in Minneapolis um, doing a gig. And he forwarded what I sent him to her music director, Derek Dixby, and Derek was like, okay, well, you can come in another day because we want we want to see you in person. So um, I got the call back for the in-person audition. And when I walked in, it was uh, Derek Dixie um, and this other uh, casting director. Her name is Susan Salgado. And it was, it was hilarious when I walked in because Susan had been literally up until that very moment texting me probably weekly trying to get me for something else. So as soon as I walked in, she was like, so I kind of was like, I think I'm gonna get this. Um, and then I sung, and what I can say about the audition process is I was there for about nine hours auditioning, mm -hmm. singing, probably nine or 10 hours, singing nonstop, um, solo and parts. I, I'm, I sing alto, so they would have us mix and match with different singers to see how we blended, um, see our stage presence, um, all types of different vocal challenges, but it was literally like a 10 hour audition. In one day? In one day. Um, maybe a week after, I got the email saying, and it was, it was funny, I remember when I got the email, I was at in and out um, and it was like, <laughs> it was like 11 o'clock at night. I was at in and out and I looked at my email and I was like, oh man! And I think it was her cousin, um, who's her tour manager, who actually emailed us. Um, and I was like, oh my God, I gotta be at rehearsal tomorrow morning at 10. <laughs> so, tomorrow morning. And it was yep, 11 o'clock at night? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Did you audition with Beyonce song or your own song? Well, the in-person part, um, I did you do like a solo audition, just like going to any other singing audition. So what did I sing? I think I sang, Can We Talk? Um, and then another part of that audition, I think I did Greatest Love of All. And then everything else we sung, Beyonce songs, all day. They wanted to hear our blend on her, her records. They wanted to see if we could catch on to her intricate part. You know, people don't, well, people don't know. Beyonce is like, one of the queens of background vocals and her parts are very intricate and a part of that show was we had to mimic those parts like we weren't just singing standard little we were doing really crazy stuff like crazy um so yeah i did the first you know round of auditions made it through um after you know the pre-screening then then the live audition and that was crazy because i had never i hadn't done a live audition in la yet like so I show up with people I had just seen in some shows at Sayers Club and, you know, uh, Peppermint Club, all these different places. I was like, oh, shoot, okay, I know that person, I know that person, especially like Cameron and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, God, here we go. What's about to happen? Um, and, you know, it slowly but surely got whittled down and they chose people. Um, and then, you know, just went straight into rehearsals from there, man. That process, you know, was a little crazy, it was strenuous because it, it challenged you. It challenged you on the spot. So you just had to quickly adapt to what it was. Um, and then I just remember getting that email and I collapsed to the floor. Like I had nothing. I had like, I was done. I was literally done. So what was your, what did your audition look for when you first stepped up? What did you do? So my, uh, actually for that audition, 
I auditioned with Why I Love You by Major because uh, I just wanted to show a little bit of range. Um, but during the pre-screening, I think I did like some John Legend and I think I did like a old school Temptation song or something like that, just to show a little bit of range. Um, well, for me, it's funny because I ended up, uh, I, w I got a call from a casting director that, that said, hey, there's an opportunity to perform for an A-list celebrity and um, all you got you to go to the audition, just trust me. And I can't tell you anymore, but just trust me. I was like, oh, I don't know, you know, because I was still, I was kind of broken up because like I was, I was thinking about doing the four or I was, I was doing, helping with the production of the four. And then they said, because I helped with the production, I couldn't be a part of the actual show. So I was like really bummed out, man, right? So then the cast, same casting director calls me and she says, go to this audition. So I went to the audition. Instantly, I'm like bamboozled, like just, I'm looking at everybody that's there and they're just singing and they sound so amazing and doing all this stuff that I, I don't feel comfortable. Like, oh man, is, is this what they're looking for? And I was like, oh man. So I ended up walking out of the audition before they even told us who it was for or anything like that. I went outside and I called my friend and they said, uh, they said, what are you doing? I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. Like, there's these people in there just singing. Like, it was like, do you know who you are? Like, get in there. Like, God got you. Get in there. Like, go. And it made me hang up the phone. I hung up the phone. And uh, I went back in there. And then they told us who it was for. And we went in and, and I sang <laughs> and got the call back. <laughs> it was it was incredible, man. I mean, it, it was definitely a, a hard audition. Um, but it was a, it was it was it was worth every every bit of it because it made me feel like I I deserved where 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 I was and I'm sure everybody that got the the spot that they got in the choir for it was believed that too because it was it wasn't easy. What did you audition with when you went in when you finally came back in? <laughs> um, I actually did a song for you, Donny Hathaway. Um, and it was something that was really like in that moment I changed my song um, to that because. I just felt like that's what I needed to sing. Like I just, I just felt that that was something that I needed to sing in that moment. Um, and I did it, and they smiled, and <laughs> it was just, it was great. It was great. Wow. And then how many? So how long when you walked out of the room was that it? And then you got the email, or you was there something else you had to come back to do? Um, you know what's funny? I, I the the audition process was such a blur for me. Uh, because I, I still didn't believe that I belonged there. You know what I mean? Like, I was just like, I was so, and I have like bad anxiety, like terrible anxiety. And so like, I'm sitting up there like, oh God, they're not gonna call me back, they're not gonna call me back. I get the call back. Yeah, I, I got a call back that same day. We had to come back. We had to do the, the another set, pop, another part to the audition, which was more singing. Um, and then it just kept elevating from there. Like there were just different, different rounds of just um, how, how, what we could do vocally. Um, and that was it, yeah. Uh, then we had to wait, and I thought I didn't get it, got the call, and it was good, yeah. The funny thing was, she had been putting out audition notices, but um, nobody was auditioning, because of course she didn't put her name on it. Um, and so I had a terrible 2017, as many people did. Um, lost my car got, re not repoed, my car got um, totaled. Car got totaled, family stuff happening. It was just the trashiest 2017 ever. And so the beginning of 2018, I was just praying and I told God, okay, whatever you send my way, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna audition, even if I don't want, even though I don't know what it is, if it comes my way, I'll just go. So uh, 2018 happened and then someone sends me this notice and I was just like, you know, I don't wanna do this. But I just remembered the prayer I prayed in the beginning of 2018 that I was just gonna go for whatever came my way. And this loved one also was really on me about doing it. So um, yeah, sent in a self tape and, you know, through a little bit of a process, I got the gig. A few people reached out to me for the first time uh, one of my friends reached out to me, I couldn't do it. Um, I had a previous engagement on uh, one of the dates that they had scheduled already. And I was like, man, I can really only do one day. But at the time, they weren't telling me who the artist was or anything. So I was just like, man, I can't do it. I can do this date, but I can't do that. He's like, no, nah, we kind of need you for both dates. Then I found out who it was for, so I was immediately pissed. Um, and then a week after, uh, another one of my friends hit me 
and was just saying uh, how he referred me for a big opportunity um, and hopefully they reach out. And I didn't ask any questions. I was just like, man, thanks. I appreciate it and all that. And then a few days later, I got a text to come in to rehearsal for Coachella. And it's really crazy for me uh, just to get that text and then to walk in. Um, I'm Me knowing a few of the people that were already uh, hired and, and up on board, this is my first rehearsal. So I walk straight in, you know, I uh, shake hands with the MD and introduce myself and everything. Um, and basically I was mistaken for another Steve. And so <laughs> I'm just, I was just standing like in the middle of everybody like just like stuck like okay do you want me to like audition right here you need me to sing you need me to dance like what do you need me to do like he's like no nah, you good we're gonna see we're gonna see how this works out and then just okay. went from there but they thought they were calling a whole but they thought team. they were calling another steve yeah and luckily uh some of my friends who already had the job were right there they was like oh yeah this is steve he uh does such and such and he's really good and so they kind of talked me up too at the same time, so that helped. Can you believe that? This man, this man wasn't even supposed to be in the room. He wasn't even supposed to be in the room. And he not only did Beachella, but he went on to do On The Run too, around the world. What? what? You weren't even supposed to be in the room. That just shows you. It don't matter who you are, where you are, if you got the gift, if you got the calling, if it's a part of your purpose, if it's a part of your journey, you show up and that's yours. It's yours. Ugh.
So as some of us know, with any project, there's going to be some good, there's going to be some bad. So I wanted to know from the singers, what was their most memorable moment? And what was a moment that they was kind of like, ah, I can go without this. <laughs> so take a look and see what they had to say. Say My Name was hard because it was really high and it was belty. Um, <laughs> like really high. Say my name, say my name. And we had to push with certain notes, like it wasn't in the pocket, it wasn't right on the one or right on the two. It was like, I remember when we went over, we were learning this part and we had to um, actually sing it for that Derek. And he was so irritated because people were saying, it was like five different A's going on. And like, we were in different, but because the part was so weird where we had to place it, it was out, literally hours on that part that we spent. Cause it was like, this has to be perfect. My favorite moment of the entire uh, situation was stepping out on the stage before anybody knew what was about to happen, except us. Like everybody on the stage knows what's about to happen. And then the lights lift up and you see this large crowd and they're like going crazy. And it just was, it was insane. That was my favorite moment. Cause it was like, here we go. <laughs> like there's no turning back, this is it. And, and it, was, it was incredible. I'll never forget that, ever. I feel like freedom was just like so powerful. Like the transitions in and out of that joint, just hearing that live, like it's, it's, it's a whole nother experience, man. And then with all these thousands of people just screaming and singing along. It's no feeling like it at all. Like Whatever. looking out. Looking out. What's up? Looking out and seeing, you can, like you look out early in the day and see nothing but grass and you look out later and it's nothing but people as far as the eye can see, like, and it looks like it doesn't ever end. It's just infinite. You're like, Jesus, Christmas, like how many people are out there and they're all engaged and all, all ready to go. Just the whole first weekend of Coachella was, was, was great. Um, it was just like, man, we've been rehearsing for this for a while. And now we really, we finally showed the world what we've been working on for this, uh, for this period of time. And just when we first got out there on stage before we started and just seeing like all the people was just amazing. It was like, as far as your eye could see, it was just like literally people until you couldn't see anymore. So I was like, man, this is crazy. And then it was so loud out there, the crowd was so loud. I'm like, I'll never forget that.
like me would feel like if I'm about to work with Beyonce, I'm nervous, like high anxiety, right? So I asked these singers how they felt about working with her, how they felt about her when she was in the room, like how did they handle their nerves and anxiety? So watch this. The anxiety was crazy. Like I overwhelmed for me because you just want to get it right. You know, you don't want to be the one that stands out because you got, you know, because you got it wrong. Stand out for a good reason, not because you got it wrong. So that was, that was where I was. I would say I had a little, a little anxiety in her, but it, it transferred more into excitement. Um, just to, you know, think about just my journey through LA period. And then for me to be in this room and to me, for me to be a part of this, this process and this, this movement and this expression um, was really amazing to me that all of the nerves and stuff went away. Um, and I was just really trying to be in the present in the moment. Um. So I was never really nervous. I think the only times that I felt like about anything was the very first time that I walked in the room and she was just sitting there. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. She's like literally sitting. So with the first time that the singers met her, we actually sat directly behind her because she wanted us to see how the show has had been coming together so far because the dancers had been rehearsing already for two months. Um, so I was like, oh, I'm literally sitting right behind Beyonce. Okay, this is cool. Getting in that space with all those other creatives and just seeing the overall bigger picture, it really does put some pressure on you to perform and make, make you feel like, okay, I gotta make sure I'm not the one that's messing up yep. because with all of these people, yep. they can see all of us. And when you mess up, they really see you. So, um, Retention has always been like a really strong suit of mine. So I wasn't necessarily nervous in terms of like learning the material, learning the moves and stuff like that. It was just once it was all brought together, the pressure of like, now don't mess up. <laughs> yeah, there was definitely anxiety. I think specifically around movement, like making sure we were all fluid, that it had energy, that it was like swagging. I think as we got closer, of course, with any creative process, direction changes. So then, okay, we've mastered or, or at least had a grip on what we were directed to do before, but then it changes. Okay, can we adapt? You know what I'm saying? Can I adapt? Um, it definitely took me out of my comfort zone, but I think that's what made it probably to this day the most impactful creative experience I've ever had because the, in no way, shape, or form could I be comfortable. N nothing about that made me feel comfortable. And it was because I felt uncomfortable, because I was away from everything that I knew, it forced me to grow. It forced me to stretch myself as an artist and figure out, okay, what can I bring to this, you know? Tell me something, boy. Are you happy? 
happy in this modern world or do you need more is there something else you're searching for All right, so we could all assume that if you're working for Beyonce and you're on a stage with her, you're more than likely gonna have to dance. You gotta move something, okay? You ain't just standing there flat-footed the whole time. So I wanted to ask the singers, did they have to dance during the audition, during the show? Are they dancers? How did they handle that? So watch this. Yeah, I didn't know that we'd have to dance, but I mean, I figured, you know, with anything with Beyonce and Jaquel, like, you know, there's gonna be some movement. So, um, and I have tons of experience with dancing, so it wasn't it wasn't anything too strenuous, but I, it definitely set us apart, some people from, you know, others that weren't able to really move the way that they were looking for for this particular project. So um, I think that helps with having some experience actual footwork choreography or was it oh yeah like we're up there pretty much almost i'd say 75 percent of the time 75 80 80 percent of the time we're up there doing like when you see everybody up there obviously the dancers are doing way more than what we were doing right, 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 right. but we definitely had our eight counts of our own and our boom boom cats and our all of that too we had we had quite a bit quite a bit of it and then there was stuff that we just wanted to learn you know right. like we would we just would look at the other dancers and like we could do that we could do that right, and, right. you know if we could pull it off they'd be like okay go ahead and let me do that too <laughs> but yeah we we Jaquel, he, he he handed it to us i don't call myself a dancer but i got i got a little a little rhythm so mm -hmm. i can i can hold my own but picking but up i'm not a dancer not Right, picking up choreography and moving are different. Like, you could you pick it up pretty easily? Or yeah, I could pick up. I could pick up choreography. It's just not as smooth as it is with me learning a song. Right. As, other than me learning a, you know. Yep. And then having to do it together. Right. Exactly. Now, if anybody has ever seen me perform, they know I'm. I will turn to Tina Turner or Prince in a second. But that's just me being just me and present. And this, I, I'm not shy, but. Having routine choreography, honey, two left shoes. 
I was like, uh, <laughs> what is going on? And y'all don't even, y'all don't understand. They actually had us doing some of the exact choreography that the dancers were doing. I was like, this is not fair, y'all. Yeah. We don't we don't dance like this. Yeah, that was, so that was really intimidating for me because there were singers, most of the singers that catch on super quick. That wasn't me. I was like, um, can, can we go over this when we take lunch? <laughs> also, we don't. People didn't even realize that our mic positions were even choreographed. We could not have our mic in our right hand at times. Like it, everybody had to have their mic here or here or here or like everything was detailed. The issue for me was never the dancing. It was the swag. Like she's got, you know, her dancers have that like, you know, that hood swag. And I just never had that. Not that I, you know, was from some perfect neighborhood, but I was a church girl that we just didn't do stuff like that. So I had to kind of learn how they move. So it wasn't so much that even with all of us, all of us could move fairly well. It was a matter of moving one it, with unity and moving with that swag. So yeah, I, I wasn't scared because I knew she wasn't gonna have us doing like eight counts like Ashley and and the rest of them. Like I knew that wasn't gonna happen. So my thing was whatever we're doing, are we gonna be able to sing while we're doing it? And you know, like, am I gonna be able to give that? So I, and honestly, we struggled. We struggle. What can you say that you learned from Beyonce specifically during that process? That I'm not crazy because <laughs> the difference between Beyonce and I is that she has the budget to do what she does, but I am just as much of a perfectionist. I'm, I will stay in the studio. My music, my songs are like two and a half minutes long, and I will be in the studio for nine hours doing background parts. Just be, I, I'm just meticulous. And to see somebody who was also like that, to see where she's got, I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm wrong. Stop cracking the whip. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say, I'll say this. I I learned how to be about my business, be about my craft, uh, being professional. I learned how to do that when, when I saw her walk in the room. Um, and that's, that's what I, that's what I'll say for, for, for myself. Um, I took away just, it was like being at, 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 at like Carter University, if I can say that, you know, you just, you, if you're, if you watch, you'll learn, you know what I'm saying? So being in the room with, with, with those great people, and, and, and the, you know, her and, and her staff and team and everybody, everybody that's involved being in the room, you feel like you're a part of something great, you know? And she, she makes it known, like, for that, for, for Coachella, like, she was like, this is a this is a group thing. Like, it's not just her, you know? It was a group thing. Like, we all had a part and we all had to play our part. And that's why I was so successful. Like, she, she knew what she was doing. And I, and I took that, I take that now in my artistry as, you know, know what you want. You know, take care of your people, look after your people, know that it's not just about you because the ultimate goal here is to what? Inspire people, to encourage people, to to make people better, you know, because we it's, it's all one, one. look at what's going on in the world right now. You know, we we have no choice but to look after each other now, but we can't. We can't even reach out and touch nobody, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. Um, vocal finesse, um, just like knowing your voice, and just feeling it and singing, like every time you get the opportunity. Uh, that's kind of been my motto anyway, but it was confirmed while I was on, when I was doing the shows with her, just like, man, just like really hone in on your craft, like what you do, like do it well. Um, and also like, just go go hard every time. Just like, I picked up on a lot of her performance, like tips or, you know, little nuances that she would do uh, and just to, real people in and I was like man just begin to break those things down and you know understand that and my thing is I'm never uh taking notes or learning to steal you know I'm taking it to apply in my own way you know her decision to be completely uncompromising when it comes to her vision that's something that I think you know every especially women should see, and especially black women. Um, we as women and we as black women are often taught, you know, you don't want to be too difficult because they may call you a bitch or they may call you difficult or they may call you hard to work with. 
Um, and so many times we will be, um, we will kauto, we'll um, cheapen our vision for the sake of the level where everyone else is, or just to, you know, be considered easy to work with, or I don't want to be too much of a problem. And I watched her in her uniqueness be unrelenting, but with such grace. She was never disrespectful. She was never belittling people ever, but it was just very clear. This is what I see and we're going to work it until I see on stage what I see in my head. And that literally, no lie is gonna sound dramatic, but it really did change my life. Smile though your heart is aching. Smile even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by. If you smile through your fear and sorrow, smile and maybe tomorrow, you'll see the sun come shining through. Coachella wasn't enough. J. Rome and Steve got the opportunity to go on tour with Beyonce and Jay Z for the On the Run 2 tour around the world. So you do Coachella, and then a week later, you get information that you're about to go on tour with the greatest in the world. And this is the man that wasn't even supposed to be in the room. What? Watch. Yeah, um, so uh, it happened right after uh, the Coachella uh, process. Um, and what's crazy about that is, is, you know, that was the first year, 2018 was the first year I did a vision board. Um, and on that vision board, I wrote down, I want to go to, I want to travel to two different countries, two or three different countries. I wrote down, this is the year of the tour. I don't know what, what tour I wanted to go on. And so, you know, to be able to cross out some things on my list, you know, that I wrote down and just believed in, it's just like, man, that's huge. And it just made me believe a little bit more, of course, more in, in God, but more in myself as well, you know, knowing that I have inside what it takes to make my dreams a reality. So between the Coachella time and the On The Run 2 time, how much time would you actually be able to say that you've shared with her in a space more intimate than just work? Um, I don't even know if I can calculate that a lot. <laughs> and it's not just like me going up to her or having a conversation with her or like you know us kicking it but you know 
just us being rehearsal or me walking past her to go to the bathroom or something, you know, wow. light stuff like that. And is it awkward when you're not working to like pass her and not know what to say or do? Or no, natural? no, she speaks. She's real chill. She's real cool, you know, down to earth. So, you know, I, I'll say, I'll say working on, on OCI 2 uh, with those great minds, all of them, uh, I, it was a deeper, a deeper experience doing that even than Coachella for me. Um, he just, I, I learned even more, you know, like I said, I was at like Carter University, like I, I'll say that. I really learned a lot of how to be um, an independent artist or, you know, just an artist in general, how to take care of my business, how to take care of family, how to take care of my people, how to take care of everything. I, I learned a lot. It was, it was such a great experience, man. Of course, my nerves was all over the place. You know, I'm, I'm just like that. You know, I just, I'm like, am I, am I doing the right note? You know, because there's only four of us. So it's like, am I doing the right note? Like, I, uh, like is, this, is this good? Is it, like, I'm just questioning myself. I'm like, I, I remember uh, Tiffany Monique. She said, if you're in the room, you're supposed to be here. Have confidence and do what you do what you're supposed to do. Like, I love her, man. Like, she just taught, she taught me a lot on the tour too. Like, <clears throat> it was great. And I missed my flight. How do you miss your first flight? Yeah, I missed my flight. You know, I missed my first flight and I had to catch a flight the next day. <laughs> All right, yo. How do you do that? Dude, tell, look, and then, and then I missed my flight coming back to the States on the last leg of the European tour. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, I just, I have insomnia, so I, I wasn't sleeping. And so when it hit, it hit at the wrong time. Like, I, it hit as I'm, like, I, I, I had my bag packed, all my stuff is sitting there, and I'm like, oh no. So like, okay, I gotta run out the door. Lobby called, well, this is when we coming back. Lobby called with like at 6 a.m. and I fell asleep at like 5.40 or something. I should have been downstairs. I just, yeah, yeah. What was the response? Um, you should know better. Like, I, I mean, I had already, the second time, I had already missed my first one. So the second time, they was like, you should know better, man. Like, and everybody was always like, every, people were calling me too. I was just tired at that point. Like, I was just, I was drained. We were done. Like, I, yeah. Done, man. Done. I did you wrong. Fucked up and left you with a broken home. Too late before I turned the song You're gone Now I'm all alone So stuck in my music Wishing you were home Seems I'm the reason I'm all alone You're gone
So all of these singers are solo artists, all right? This opportunity comes along. They got to take two months off of their solo gigs to work on Beyonce's gigs. And then those who went on the tour, that's another six months. So eight months out of the year, you working with the queen, which is amazing, but all of your solo work is kind of being put on the shelf. How do you juggle being a solo artist and working for people like Beyonce, biggest opportunities ever? How do you juggle that? It's hard. <laughs> it's very hard. Um, I just literally plan around when I know we'll, we'll be off, which is kind of like almost never. Right. Until right now, just quarantine. Uh, but yeah, I I literally try to like, whenever I can make it happen, if I need to book a session at like nine in the morning until 12, cause I got rehearsal at one, like I'll do that. You know, finding those little pockets of time to like get it done. Cause it's possible. It's not gonna be easy, but it's possible. When I first moved here, my agenda was just to get on a tour. Like I'm about to go, go on tour with an artist, like, travel and you know I'm gonna be good but then I feel like my mind has shifted so much since then it's like man I do have these skills and these talents and uh to to do this you I, I, I can watch these artists do and perform certain things like man I'm inspired but I can do that too mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so it's like okay let me invest more time into myself gotcha um because I'm invested in a lot of other people's dreams, which is fine, because I feel like there's still an art to that. And, you know, working and catering to somebody's vision, I feel like that's still dope. Um, but I would want to do the same for myself. There's this balance that I have gotten off, if I'm being really honest with you, and it's easy to, because the type of artist I am, like many of us, you commit all of yourself to what you're working on. And so it's easy then to forget, because you're still creating, and you're still using your gifts, it's easy to forget, oh, wait a minute, what about my vision? And so one thing I made a point to at the beginning of this year specifically, um, that I was going to commit the same amount of time and the same amount of heart to what God has given me, because that's ultimately what it is. God gives people different visions and different gifts, and though it's beautiful to serve someone else's vision and help them, what good are you doing to the world if you're not doing what he gave you? Um, I'm just stubborn in general, so um, there's been work that comes my way and I just say no because I don't want to do it because my pr primary focus at the end of the day is my, my solo career and writing. Um, so there's been a bunch of stuff that I've just been like, I don't want to do. And I probably could have made a ton of money, but I, I want to redirect my energy and my focus and my own stuff. I challenge everybody that's struggling with that decision of like, oh, should I, you know, should I do that? Will I make my rent? Will I do this and that? Just go for it. There's no time like now. Um, don't do it during the quarantine because you need to be safe. But when this is over, take risks, man. Like invest in yourself. Um, you are your biggest cheerleader. Just go for your dreams. You don't want to spend your whole life building other people's dreams. You want your own and you want to look back and say, I used every bit of talent and the gift that God gave me to make a difference in this world. So working on this show, there were 200 people on the stage with Beyonce. So not everyone's gonna have the opportunity to speak to her and tell her individual stories and have one-on-ones with her. So I wanted to give the singers an opportunity right now to say to Beyonce something that they've always wanted to share with her that they were not able to while working with her. Watch. Thank you. Thank you for um, the lesson and just showing me and inspiring me to go harder in my my own artistry. Uh, I think I had a, a, a front row seat to a master class, you know, every show. Um, and just not even with uh, her and Jay-Z as artists, but with their team, with their production, with their management, like just seeing how all that moved efficiently just like, man, okay, I like this. I want to take this and apply this to my own, you know, journey and my artistry and, you know, take it from there. So it's like, I'm really, I'm really learning throughout this whole process, so. I just want to thank you for, you know, speaking up for black people and black women and just being unapologetic 
for your artistry and for allowing me to be a part of this. I mean, she really spoke up and was super unafraid to be super black to promote all this female empowerment and to just say whatever the hell she wanted to say without hesitating or backing down or watering it down. So that was literally what I wanted to say. You are phenomenal. You change the, I mean, every time you step on the stage, you change the world. And, you know, it's a meaningful performance every single time. And thank you for inspiring me. And I look forward to using all of that. You've taught me to go further with my artistry. For me, uh, with that experience, it was the first time that I kind of stepped out on faith and I went on a, abs a leave of absence from my job and I just was doing the music full time. And um, that experience in and of itself was very rewarding because it kind of pushed me in some areas to be uncomfortable so that I can be comfortable in the spaces that I really want to be in. Um, so for that, you know, I was very grateful, very thankful. I would say thank you so much for the opportunity because I learned so much from you. I, uh, I, I'm a better person and a better man and a better artist because of working with you and your husband and everybody that you had surrounded, that I was, that I was surrounded by in your camp. I appreciate everything and uh, I, I wish nothing but love and happiness and, and blessings upon blessings for her and her family and everybody. She deserves it. I would say thank you for constantly changing industry rules based on what you're inspired to do for being your unapologetic self because when you operate at the highest level of your purpose, you free others to do the same, whether they work with you directly or whether it's something that they see from afar and why it's so important for us to follow our purpose because you being you frees everyone around you to be themselves. Oh, it could all be so simple. We don't have to make it hard. Loving me don't have to be a battle, baby. We don't have. I know they say love's only for the daring Well, I dare you to try out this love Love That's only if you're willing and you're ready To love me and respect me
right, y'all. So we did what we could, okay? We got around the NDA as much as we could. I hope, I wish we could have got you more information, you know, but we want to respect the privacy of Beyonce and we also want to make sure that these singers are not in trouble, all right? So if you have any further questions that they could possibly answer, hit them up on their Instagrams, follow them, support them. I hope that you learned something from this little piece. You know, we want to just inspire people, give you an insight to how it is in the industry, just a little bit, even if we can only offer a little bit. So hopefully you guys took some of that and will apply that in your own specific journeys, not just entertainment based, but this all goes into just your life. If you're trying to own something or do something or create anything, it's going to take some time, some effort, some work. You're going to walk into rooms you're not even supposed to be in and then it just may come to life right then. You just never know. So keep going, keep moving, keep creating, stay safe in the house, but keep on going. This has been Celebrating Homecoming. I'm Jeremy Irwin. Thank you all for tuning in. Have a safe one. Bye.